Hey there, Mike Rasmussen coming to you from my home office today. It is Friday. Um, so the, the title of this video is, you know, straight talk from a recruiter about the recruiting process. So I want to just get into demystify a little bit about what this all is about. about. So having been in recruiting for nearly 20 years, um, I just want to share some five tips that candidates can do to um, leverage their relationship with a recruiter. Today you can see I'm wearing the Overcomer shirt. So I think when it comes to a job uh, search process, many people, there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of misunderstanding about job search uh, when it comes to uh, candidates uh, and what they think that recruiters actually do. So here's five tips of how to work with a recruiter. Um, so first, let me just share a, a differentiation of you know demystify the recruiting world a little bit. So there's two types of recruiters. There's an agency recruiter and there's also an in-house recruiter. So these two definitions, um, you got to make sure you understand which type of recruiter you're dealing with. Right now, I am agency side recruiter, um, more of a recruiting consultancy that I work for, but it's the same idea. So in that sense, an agency recruiter is one who's working on behalf of their client to make a placement. Now that there's two types. One could be permanent placement, which is they're, they're working to place a candidate in a company uh, on behalf of their client and they're working on the reach outs to, to make those initial reach outs. Why would a, a company hire a recruiter do that? Many times it's staff shortage. It could be uh, as a result of, you know, not having enough um, under, you know, really hard roles that they need the extra pair of eyes on. Uh, they need us to go out and hunt and do proactive outbound searches for them. Other other circumstances, maybe it's a confidential search. They just don't want anyone to know. Uh, and so they don't want their own recruiters reaching out. So they reach out to an agency to, to engage. Others um, are temporary roles. So they have someone that went on a leave or they're trying to do attempt to hire. They want to try the candidate out before they actually employ them on a W-2, so on and so forth. So just keep in mind when you're working with a recruiter, um, you know, if, if it's an agency recruiter, ask some good questions up front to understand, you know, the type of recruiter they are, whether they're in-house or whether they're uh, working on behalf of a specific company. Then there's the internal recruiters. These are the folks that could be an HR or they're actually talent acquisition they're actually doing proactive reach outs. They're trying to fill a seat in their company. And those are usually direct hire positions. So on occasion, they might get a, uh, you know, a role that is temporary um, on their W-2. Most of the time, they're going to do that through an agency. So that's just a little bit of a primer. Uh, but here are five tips that I can give you about working with recruiters. One, you want to know your value proposition and you want to be able to say it well. A recruiter's job is not to get the candidate a job, they're working on behalf of their client. Very important differentiation there. So when you're in a job search, please make sure that you are you understand the differentiation because you know the recruiter is working on behalf of the company. Now, can they give you advice? Can they give you information? Sure, yeah, they can do that. And, and many times we wind up giving advice, career advice as a result of what we do, but they are working on behalf of their client. And that's very important because the time that they're given has to be focused on that. So that's point number one. Make sure you know that you know your value proposition though and what you bring to the table. What the recruiter wants to hear is the, the problems that you solved and the value that you brought and the dollar dollars and cents of the projects you were working on, things like that. So that they get to the specifics of what you did. That's that's a point, important point number one. Point number two, resume. Uh, keep it one page to two pages. There's a lot of people that say, oh, put all your work history on your resume and then you'll have a 10 page resume. No, don't do that. You're going to, that definitely is going to be, many companies don't like to see that. So you try to keep it concise. Concise is important. If I were to give you some advice about resumes, make sure that you have a summary of qualifications at the top and then your experience section can summarize in smaller bullets. So have the highlights of your career at the top where they can see why you're a fit and the type of role that you want. Very important. That helps you stand out. So yes, tailor your resume to the job you want. There may be some cross-functional skills and it's up to you as a candidate to 
get that phone call, get that recruiter on the phone. Your resume's main purpose is to get you in front of the recruiter. Very important. Next point, interviews. Um, you know, interviews with hiring managers. You're going to go through a series of um, events. One is the pre-screen. So the pre-screen is exactly what it sounds like. It's to um, make sure you're fit for the job. So that's usually with the recruiter. Next step will usually be with the actual client. So that will be a hiring manager interview. So that's point two. The companies may have two or three interviews or a long interview process in one day where you have to meet all the stakeholders. It really depends on the role because technical roles might have longer interview processes. <sighs> roles in other disciplines might have shorter. So it just depends on the position. It, it is important for you to ask about the recruiter when you're working with the recruiter, ask what the interview process is like. That's point two. Point three, what is it? The motivator, you know, once you know about the company, why do you want to work there? If you can share the, the motivation of your career path decision and why you're looking right now, that's very important. And telling that story and coinciding it with your value proposition can be very helpful to you to stand up. Number four, what's the other thing to demystify? ATSs. A lot of times, a lot of people have misconceptions about ATSs. Like the ATS is going to rank you. Not everyone does. There are some that do. So it is, you know, you're going to hear these career consultants that say, oh, well, the ATS is going to rank you automatically. Artificial intelligence, sure, might be utilized to get those things across. But just make sure you have an understanding of the type of ATS and its parameters. Don't assume uh, because maybe you think, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't match all these qualifications. Maybe you match at least 60 to 80 percent of them. Apply anyway. That, that ATS is not going to knock you out if you've you know done your homework on that company and you know your value proposition and why you might want to work there. So those are key. So if you know your value proposition, cover letters, do they are they important? Yes, they are. Depending on the person, they can be uh, something that uh, would be utilized. Other times, they just need the resume. That's all I care about. Skills um, matter. Those are important. Take a look at that. Make sure you know your skills. So point number five is... Offer negotiation. Many times when you're working with a recruiter up front, make sure you're you're honest with them about everything that you need in the recruiting process or to consider a new role. That initial conversation is so important. It will help you. So when you're working with recruiters, remember they know uh, their client and they know the internal scope. That sometimes agency recruiters might not have all the information about that client, but at least they'll give you some initial information. So. Make sure you go away from the first conversation, uh, being able to know what the pay range is, uh, what your value proposition is, and that you were able to talk through with the recruiter the key things that you need from them. And it's a two-way road. Remember that you know recruiters are human beings too, so they want to make sure that you know they're helping you through that process. So if most of us will care about you from a human perspective. Uh, just do keep in mind that it's important to demystify this process. Many times it's just there's a lot of different moving parts. Do not ghost the recruiter. Uh, this is my final point. Many, many times we'll get a candidate on the phone and they just disappear. Like we'll have a couple of initial conversations. Maybe they got an offer. Maybe something happened. Just shoot an email over and say, hey, this is what's going on. You never know if that, that role that you're, that you're in could fall through. So don't ghost anyone. You know, we... The good recruiters won't ghost you, so don't ghost us. Uh, try to, you know, remember two-way road. Close the loop. If you get a job, you make sure that recruiter knows. It's okay. You can tell them, hey, I found a new role. I'm not interested anymore. My circumstances have changed. Just be honest. Very important. I just want to make sure that these tips are helpful to you. And these are just some quick tips for job seekers when dealing with recruiters. Have a great day. This is Where's Your Next. I will have more content like this in the future. Um, hey, other things are coming. I'm doing finance uh, videos. I'm doing gig content. I'm doing a whole host of things on my YouTube channel. I interview other recruiters. You should watch those interviews. Please subscribe. Um, I want to add value. And if you want to see future videos about careers and your questions as a job seeker, fellow recruiters, your comments are, are welcome. What kind of videos would you like to see? What kind of content would you like to see? Put it in the comments. I will take those all into consideration. I will put out videos that matter to my audience. So please subscribe. I'm trying to make great content for people. And that's what I do. My name is Mike Rasmussen.
where's your next recruiter? Have a great day. Enjoy this Friday. Uh, have a great weekend. Hope it's, it's going to be a beautiful weekend out here in Utah. So wherever you are, I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope as the summer ends for you that you're on track. Sprint to the end. This is the end, you know, final th- four months of the year. Make it count. That's what life's all about. So in your job search, also make it count. Know your value proposition. Know the long term. Why are you doing all this? At the end of the day, if you can tell the, tell your story in a compelling way, you'll always have hiring options in front of you. I guarantee it. From me to you, happy Friday. Where's your next? Always keep working to, to where's that next in your life. And you'll be you'll be golden. Have a good have a good weekend.